Man, I praise God for this nation. You know, I think it's fitting that we as believers celebrate the 4th of July like this. There's a lot of people that want to make the 4th of July something secular, but this nation was born out of revival. You know, if it wasn't for the great awakening, we wouldn't have had an America. I forget the exact figures. I just did a uh, Bible study tonight with Richard Harris, and he was giving some of these statistics. But uh, Locke wrote a book that basically was the foundation. He quoted from the from the Bible 1,500 times in that book. And then that book is quoted nearly word for word in our Declaration of Dependence and our Constitution. It's cited, I forget how many times, but dozens and dozens of times. And our founding fathers, if it hadn't have been for this spiritual freedom that they found and they broke away from the tyranny of the religion that had been done over them, that caused them to believe that if they could be free spiritually, that they could be free from tyranny in government. And this nation was born out of revival and it is appropriate for us as believers to celebrate this. We're really the only ones that can truly celebrate it. We've used that verse. I quoted it last night this morning. I quoted it a number of times tonight. But if the sun shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And we're really the only ones who are free and can celebrate and thank God for the freedom. You know, I'm aware that there's some people that are so focused on all of our problems that we have, and man, we got plenty of them. I don't think anybody here is denying that. But I, I was thinking tonight about our good friend Dave Duell. He's now with Jesus, and he's gone on to be with the Lord. But Dave Duell, I remember he was over in Nigeria and he held a meeting there and saw miracles happen. And the people were so excited. There was tens of thousands of people there. And the next day he was walking through the marketplace. And of course he was a white man in a black nation. So he stood out and everybody recognized him. And when they saw him, they remembered that he was the evangelist from the night before. And they started running and wanting to touch him. And they were just, you know, reaching out, wanting to touch him. And his first thought was to say, no, it's not me. No, it's not me. Give all of the glory to the Lord. That's what he wanted to say. But before he could say that, the Lord stopped him. And he said, Dave, he says, what would you have thought when I rode into Jerusalem on that little donkey and they begin to put palm branches on the ground and put their garments on the ground and say, glory to God, Hosanna in the highest. What would you have thought if that donkey would have said, it's not me, it's not me. <laughs> he said, nobody's worshiping you. Nobody's praising you. They're praising the one that's riding on the inside of you. And when he saw that, he said it changed his whole attitude and he started just walking through like this and letting people touch him. And you know what? Nobody is praising all of the mistakes. God has never had anybody qualified working for him yet. And you know what? We're all imperfect beings, but I'm telling you, God did something supernatural in establishing this nation. And this nation has given hope to people all over the world. And I know many of you don't have that perspective, but I never will forget when Jamie and I went to Romania in 1990, just two months after the, well, three months after the Berlin Wall came down and one month after Ceausescu had been killed and we were over there and we had our partners supply 10,000 Bibles and we bought 10,000 Romanian Bibles and we went out into a uh, square in Cluj, Napoca, Transylvania and we started giving away Bibles and we gave away 10,000 Bibles in five minutes. They came from everywhere. The people were crying and I went into a church there and I told those people, there was a woman who was a partner of ours. This is uh, back before I was on television and it was only radio. And this woman uh, had come across the border illegally from Mexico as she was a church janitor. And uh, I was putting out the news that we were collecting Bibles to go to Romania and give away. And this woman got me and took me into a closet where she had all of her brooms and mops and things like that. And she had a map of Romania on the wall. 
And she gave me $10 and she says, this is all I've got. But she says, I want you to know that for years, God has had me pray for the people in Romania. And she says, I take a city every day and I pray over it. And she showed me her map and where she had put little pins that she had prayed over it. And she says, please take this $10 and tell the people in Romania that God never forgot them, that God loves them, that God has people praying for them. And so I got up in this church and I told that story. And I tell you, people started weeping because they felt like they had been forsaken. And they didn't know what to do. And it was one of these churches where the women sat on one side and the men sat on the other. It was very religious. But it was just so emotional. People were openly crying and stuff. And I didn't know what to do. I was emotional. And I just kind of, there was a dead spot. And I just stood there. And all of a sudden, a person stood up and started singing the battle hymn of the Republic. And every person in that church, over a thousand people stood and every one of them knew the battle hymn of Republic in Romanian. And they started singing. I couldn't understand the words, but I knew what they were because I recognized the tune. And I'm telling you, those people, they began to tell us later that they said, you know, America always gave us hope because there was people battling the evil that they were living under and stuff like that. And so, you know, God has raised this nation up and we are in a position right now that I believe is God given. If it wasn't for the United States and there's others, of course, we have a great relationship with Britain now and there's other nations, but I mean, at the moment, America is leading the charge. We are the sole superpower that at the moment is holding all of the evil things at bay. And I'm telling you, God raised this nation up. The gospel has gone forth in a way that it never has before because of the freedoms here. And I'm not, you know, ignorant of all of our problems, but man, I, I just praise God for this nation. I praise God for the good things he's done. And I just want to give God praise too that during this last election, the church, I believe, finally woke up. Praise God. And man, the evangelicals turned out in record numbers and I believe that we have dodged a bullet. The battle is not over. Man, we are still fighting and there's a long, long way to go, but I shudder to think where we would have been if the other side would have won. And you know, there's been a change in the attitude. There has. There's, there's been a change in this nation and we have an opportunity now to do some things, but I tell you, we need to stand up and we need to be vocal. I tell you, our forefathers, they put their lives on the line. When they signed that Declaration of Independence, it was like signing a death warrant. And I can't give you the exact statistics, but I know that the vast majority of them either did die or lost everything they had in the revolution and they, they pledged their honor and their fortunes and everything that they had to this cause. And I tell you, we need to do it. And this is not, some people think, but there needs to be a separation of church and state. We shouldn't be patriotic and stuff. I'm telling you, this nation was conceived in revival. It was birthed by the spirit of God. And it is absolutely appropriate for us to be praising God and thanking God for what he's done. And so anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed spending July the 4th with us. Amen. Amen. And, and honor in the Lord. And let's just pray for this nation. Again, I think that we've got an opportunity that we might not have had in the last couple of decades to see some things happen. But boy, if you've noticed, there is a lot of opposition. And uh, the ungodly are not going quietly. And we need to just, we need to pray and we need to believe and we also need to uh, speak up and be believers in the marketplace. Amen. You know, we were doing this Bible study tonight and somebody wrote in and asked about why is it that it seems like Christians are the only one that it's okay to persecute? Man, you can't speak against a homosexual. You can't speak against people for any type of immorality. Everybody's so sensitive. We've got to be politically correct. And they were saying, but the Christians are the only one that you can discriminate against. 
And uh, you know what that is? We call it political correctness, but why I believe it is, is a spirit of antichrist. That's all it is. In the Bible, it was called the spirit of antichrist. It is not the spirit of anti-Muslim, anti-immoral, anti-anything. It's just anti-Christ is what it is. It's a demonic spirit and we are at battle in this nation. You know, another thing we quoted when we were at our um, Bible study tonight, David Barton said that uh, 70 to 80% of all Christian youth, when they go to college, renounce their faith in the Lord. They lose it within one year of being in college. Our colleges are secular strongholds. Now there's some exceptions to that and there's some good things happening, but I'm saying as a rule, our colleges are systematically coming against everything godly. They, are re, they have revisionist history. They're writing God out of things. And uh, I tell you, that's just terrible. If we were in a battle and you knew that 80% of your soldiers were going to be killed, I guarantee you, you would regroup and do something different. You can't just sacrifice 80% of your troops. And yet 80% of Christian youth renounce their faith within one year of being in college. And I'm telling you, we're in a battle. And again, I think we've got a great opportunity right now, but we need to stand up. And I tell you, we are taking a stand. For those of you that didn't know that declaration of dependence upon God is something that we did. And we signed, we had 80,000 people sign that. And we sent that to, uh, I forget the exact figures, anybody know? It was every elected, I mean, there was thousands of elected officials that we signed that with all of the signatures and sent it to elected officials across all 50 states and in Washington. And we just told them that we are not going to bend or bow or burn. Amen. And we took a stand on this. And man, we need to stand up and we need to proclaim our liberty and remind people, I don't care who rewrites whatever, this nation was conceived in liberty. It was conceived because of spiritual things. I heard David Barton say that it was, it was only about 25% of the population of the colonies that actually stood for the revolution. Another 25% were loyal to Britain and 50% were indifferent one way or the other. They just didn't want any conflict. And yet those 25% made a difference. And today we're celebrating it 241 years later because a small number of people stood up. And I'm telling you, we've seen what can happen when you have people stand up and begin to start taking a stand against immorality. And I believe that our best days are in front of us if we will just stand up and do what we need to do. Amen? So again, I just want to say that I think it is very appropriate for us to celebrate the 4th of July like this because it was the Lord that gave us this nation. And with all of our problems, I think we're still probably the best nation afloat. Amen? And I just praise God for this nation. So I'd like us to stand and I just want to lead us in prayer for this nation as a whole, but also for us individually that we would rise up and find out what God wants us to do. You know, I spend millions of dollars every month on television and I'm reaching out and, you know, we've got the wards here and Deanne is uh, James Dobson's uh, I don't know exactly what the title is, but she works with James Dobson. And I had James Dobson on my program and we've talked about that, man, Christians have got to stand up and we've got uh, people that are doing things, but every one of us need to do it. I spend millions a month on television, but you influence people that will never listen to me. Never. I don't care how much money I spend on it. I don't care how much James Dobson does. He's getting this Bill Armstrong Award. I just read that today. And man, that's a great honor on the 22nd of July. And he has been fighting for this nation for decades. But you know what? You can't have one or two people doing it. We have, I don't know, 1,200 or more people right here. If every one of you went out and took a stand and became the salt and the light that God called us to be, this would represent hundreds of thousands of people possibly millions of people. I'm telling you, every one of us needs to stand up. And so, Father, we just thank you for this nation. 
We thank you, Father, for what you've done, for you choosing to establish this nation for whatever your purposes were. We just thank you, Father. Thank you for all of our forefathers that have fought and that have died not only on the battlefield, but have fought against the ungodliness, the ministers who've stood up. We just thank you for the multitudes of people who stood to make this nation what it is and to give us this opportunity. Father, we thank you for the recent reprieve that we've had and for the opportunity that we have now, Father, to, to make this nation great again, to see things happen. Father, we just thank you and we acknowledge you as our source, as this national hymn talked about. Father, even when we forget, thank you for your forgiveness and your mercy towards us, for the blessings that we don't even recognize. And Father, we acknowledge you as our source and we just pray and believe that, Father, you are raising up people all over this nation, other people in other nations who love this nation, who love what you've done here. Father, we believe that you are raising up people all over this globe that will stand up and stand against the evil forces that are trying to destroy our morality, that are trying to cause us to move away from you and to make this a secular nation. Father, we just stand in agreement against this political correctness, against this spirit of antichrist that is working and trying to silence the body of Christ. And I speak to any spirits of antichrist in this place that have found any lodging in people and that fear has caused them to be quiet and not proclaim their faith. Father, I just rebuke those things. We stand against it. We speak that those things are not prospering. We thank you, Father, that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And Father, we believe that righteousness is coming back into this nation. Yes. Father, I thank you that you are raising up voices all over this nation, people who will be unashamed, who will stand and speak and exalt righteousness and promote godliness. Father, we thank you for that. I pray that there are people right here tonight, Father, that they will be touched and inspired to go back and to be the salt and the light and to take a stand and to stand against the immorality, not in hatred, but in love. As Ephesians 4.15 says that we would speak the truth in love, but that we would speak the truth, that we would tell people the truth, knowing it's the truth that we know that sets us free. And Father, we just dedicate ourselves afresh and anew, like so many millions of people have done in the past, that Father, we'll lay our life and our fortunes and all of the things that you've given us on the line to promote godliness in this nation, to stand against the evil that is trying to put out the light. And Father, we just make that commitment and I thank you that you are raising up people right here in this place tonight. That Father will be inspired to take a stand, to speak the truth. And Father, I thank you. I believe that that is coming to pass. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for preserving us for 241 years against all of the things that have come against this nation. And Father, we believe that once again, you'll deliver this nation, that our best days are in front of us. Thank you, Father, that the light that is set on a hill is going to shine brighter than it ever has. Thank you, Father, for raising up people in every area of life. And Father, we thank you. Praise God. Father, we believe that your eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show yourself strong in behalf of those who are perfect in your sight. And Father, we just say, don't look any further. Don't pass us by tonight. Father, we believe that we are willing and I ask that you would light a fire on the inside of people and that we would stand for righteousness. And we thank you for it, Father. We praise you. We just believe that, Father, the best is yet to come. Thank you for it. We receive this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.